fingers crossed this holds out for the full 10 minutes <laughs> works. So what I wanted to do is think about the next phase of DMP online, how we um, essentially developed our business model, started building the client base, and I framed it as 10 years, 10 lessons. So the first lesson, which I think is actually really appropriate for today, is don't panic. This is uh, Lance Corporal Jones from Dad's Army, for people who aren't from the UK and don't know the cultural reference. Given that I'm Jones, I think this is quite fitting, but also for all the issues we've had today. I think things always happen that are unexpected. So the first thing is don't panic. We, we were facing quite a scary prospect, um, to be honest, like when we had the removal of funding from JISC, um, you know, it was unexpected. Um, we had an active service in DMP Online and a growing user base, a number of people from overseas also um, using the service. We knew we needed to start charging to cover the maintenance cost because, you know, developers need paying, as do help desk staff. Um, but we also knew that people were used to getting it for free. And to be quite honest, we, know, we obviously know wage bills, but it's hard to calculate what does this even cost to run? So it was a very kind of like mind blowing, scary time to try and figure out what to do next. But I think the primary thing you need to know is what your values are. Um, and when we were defining what we did with DMP online, I think you've got to be true to yourself. It really mattered to us that the code base remained open. So when I first approached Glasgow Uni and said, okay, we, we have this tool, we have customers, well, we have people overseas who want to use it, they expect to pay, how do we do this? They wanted us to protect the IP, set up a company, spin out. And that was absolutely not the way, well, it's not what I wanted from, from my career, but it wasn't the DCC values either. Um, we really wanted to try and keep free access to the tool wherever possible. So we didn't want to be charging researchers. Um, and this is what led to the freemium model. So it's an open source code base. Anyone can take the code base, run it themselves. Um, and we've put the charges on essentially added value services for institutions or for organizations that want all the admin data. And the next thing um, is, I, I think, just to be honest, this was work in progress for a long time. Um, and I think you've got to just accept that those things take time. Um, it, took us years literally to figure out what to charge and how to charge. Um, we kept telling people, you know, okay, yes, you can use this service. We'll give you access for free for now, but there will be a charge at some point. We didn't know when that would come in. Um, and there was way more work than we ever expected around the contracts, the SLAs, all the processes to set things up. So one message I would give to the colleagues who are now running DMP online is double or treble any time estimate and also don't beat yourself up about not getting stuff done. I remember sometimes you know I'd see an email from somebody that I'd responded to them a year earlier saying oh yeah we'll, we're figuring out our costs at the moment and I was horrified to realize a year had passed but there is always a lot to do and it's difficult work so try not to beat yourself up. And then also uh, another lesson was just sounding people out. So as I said, we kept telling people, you know, we are going to charge. It was very much a finger in the air when, uh, you know, we were thinking about the price range and we'd quote something on an email and get people's gut reactions. Um, I also spoke to people in a number of different unis to try and understand their positions. Was it easier to pay for a membership or was it easier to pay for like a service with a certain contract? So we did some very loose market research. Um, we probably should have done more, but you know, there's only so many hours in, in a day. And then we got to the phase like halfway through, okay, we have to just do this. We have to just put out our charges, start, you know, developing the service and really ask ourselves, what's the worst that can happen? You know, we could end up with no customers. We could end up with some upset people. And we did have a few unis that were disgruntled because, you know, the charges came in, they couldn't put it into their plan. They found it difficult to transition. Um, but actually what happened was that we, we kind of grew very quickly. Um, I think it isn't quite 60 customers, but essentially we took on a lot of customers in a matter of months. Um, and it was, yeah, breakneck acceleration. I did feel like my neck was going to break at some points when I had all of these contracts to do and all of these inquiries to handle. Um, but ultimately, I mean, I think it's been for, for the best. So the next lesson that came out of that was that you need to grow your team. 
Um, and I cannot tell you what a relief it was when we knew we had, uh, you know, income for, well, initially one year was our contracts, but people kept asking for longer contracts. So many are now three year contracts, but that let us take on more staff. And that was a huge relief. You have less single points of failure. It's not all down to like individuals, like one developer, one person doing all of the liaison. So you can avoid that burnout and stress. And it also meant we could leverage different skill sets. So, so yeah, we grew the team, more developers, so they can focus on different areas um, and bringing in different people like Magdalena, who's done all of the customer development work. Let's see if this will actually advance now. Please advance the slide. Okay, next lesson, collaborate internationally. Um, we've been hugely lucky, you know, the work we do with the DMP tool in the States and also now um, the French, the DMP Opidor using the code base. And there's massive benefits you get from that. Um, obviously two heads are always better than one. It means you bring in different perspectives, more insights. I think the decision-making is much richer as a result. And it also means that we get features for free sometimes. So there'll be something that the French have added to the tool and we can then just push it out and offer it to our customers um, without having to have done that extra work. So definitely having an international community around the code base is, is really valuable. And then picking up on community, also building the community of users. This is us all doing axe throwing in Manchester one time after a user group, which was a lot of good fun. And I think these social bonds are hugely important. And I have to really thank Magdalena for this. Um, she set up regular user groups, does monthly knowledge exchange dropping calls, um, you know, is doing the newsletter and the socials that we have. Um, and I mean, it, for us, this is very valuable because we manage to understand what you want from the tool. But I think it's also really useful to the people using DMP online that they have a peer network. Final two lessons out of 10, the one continue to innovate. Um, you're gonna hear more about this machine actionable DMP agenda, but as part of this international collaboration, we're trying to make sure there's better reuse of content so that things are more intuitive and customized. We can give tailored recommendations to researchers and effectively help everyone derive more value um, from the content that's in DMPs, both researchers, funders and unis. And my very final lesson is um, enjoy the ride. So this is from a, a DCC conference a few years ago um, on the DMP panel. And clearly you can see that you can have a lot of fun um, working in this space of DMPs. I really actually miss the work at DCC for that, um, but I'm glad to still be part of the community at a distance. I'll maybe have to get Jayant to get um, involved in DMPs. But that was my lessons and it's been a very enjoyable journey. I mean, tough at times, but very good seeing the community grow. So thank you all very much.